Hello students, so this is Brock Skaggs. So I'm going to make this video focusing on drawing a kinematic diagram and calculating the mobility of the mechanism. And so, first, the overall machine that we're going to be looking at is this trash truck. And the trash truck is the one that comes by my house once a week, picks up the garbage. And one of the neat things about this trash truck is that the operator never has to leave the cab of the truck. And so they've got this nice hydraulic powered arm that it basically allows the driver to stay nice and cozy inside of the cab and then it just goes out grabs the bucket flings it in the back of the truck and sets the uh, trash can or bucket back down and so if you haven't seen one of these in operation um, I've got a video here you can see the truck comes up to the trash can extends the arm grabs the can goes through this nice motion dumps the trash in the back of the trash truck sets the can back down and goes on to the the next can here. And so we'll just watch it one more time. I'm going to go ahead and pause it at an intermediate position here. And so um, here's one thing we're going to be looking at is just this mechanism here. We're not really going to worry about the part of the arm that actually goes and grabs around the trash can itself, but we're just looking at this portion down here. And so one thing you'll notice is we've got one link right here with a pin connection here. There's a hydraulic cylinder here. This is a hydraulic cylinder in front. It's actually connected to this arm that has all the holes in it here. And then you're also going to see a hydraulic cylinder on the backhand side of this length here, uh, controlling the angle of this arm in the middle here. And so I'll go ahead and let that roll through the rest of it. Maybe at that point right there, you can see both hydraulic cylinders. You've got this one link here. You've got a cylinder in front, which is connected to the Again, with the arm with the holes in it, and then it's a little bit hard to see, but near this yellow-orange area is another hydraulic cylinder here, which is controlling the motion of this first link. So now we'll just let it go on by. And so now you've seen the mechanism in motion, and so let's go ahead and get to work drawing the kinematic diagram of it. And so just like before, um, we'll start by analyzing the mechanism and determining what the frame is going to be. And so here, in my mind, the frame is fairly obvious here. Uh, the frame would be the, where this arm connects in with the rest of the trash truck. And so how it connects in with the trash truck is through three fixed pin joints or pin connections here. Uh, you've got one associated with the hydraulic cylinder on the back side. You've got one associated with this link here. And then a third one down near the bottom here as well. So you've got three of them total which connects the arm into the, the rest of the machine itself. And so here we'll come in here and illustrate that with our three fixed pin joints. And so we'll say one is right here. Say one is here. And then the front hydraulic cylinder that's closest to the, the camera will be over here. And so there are three connection points or joints that connect our mechanism to the frame. And so now what do we have? Well, we've got one joint here in the middle is where I'll start with. Um, that's going to come up here. We've got a connection here. And we're also going to have a connection back here with the link that has all the holes in it here. And so it's not going to be a simple link. It'll be a complex link that's going to have one pin joint here, one pin joint here, and a third pin joint up here. And so that one's connected to this middle pin connection. And so we'll draw that just like this. For one edge of it, there's a pin connection that gets connected into a hydraulic cylinder. Comes out a little bit. Here's another pin connection which connects into the link with all the holes and then we come back down here uh, usually when I draw my more complex links like this that aren't just a single line element I like to put in some shading in here just so I can reinforce the fact that this is one rigid body one link for me and I don't have three different links all together here and so uh, there's the first one let's go ahead and put in the cylinder on the back side and so the back side here, it's a little hard to see. You'll just have to trust me that there's a cylinder, an actuator, right here. And so as we've done in other examples, we'll draw that with a, a simple link and then a slider, which slides along it. 
and those two links together are the hydraulic cylinder and so then we're to the point where we have this link here with all the holes in it uh, which is going to be the one that extends out and kind of has the gripping mechanism attached to it and so uh, for that I'll just draw a link connecting here it's going to have some pin connection here where it's got that front hydraulic cylinder hooking into it and then we've got it extending off here. Uh, the reason I'm drawing it extending way off here is because most likely that would be a point of interest for us if we were doing uh, something like a position or velocity or even acceleration analysis. Um, just on the position side of things, one thing we'd be thinking of is, well, if this link here, excuse me, this hydraulic cylinder at the back is set to a certain length, the hydraulic cylinder in the front is set to a certain length, where does that position at the very end of this link with all the holes in it? So that's obviously going to be influencing the position of the gripper as well. So this is a potential point of interest that we would be looking at to do some more calculations about. And so our kinematic diagram is almost done. We just have to put in our near side or front cylinder here, our linear actuator, if you will. which is represented just like so. And so uh, that looks pretty good. And so we've drawn in all of our links. Uh, next thing is to uh, number the links. And so we start numbering the links with the frame being one. And so I've got three p frame connection points here, uh, but just one frame designation here. So that one represents all three of those points that we connect into the frame. And so next we'll just go, we'll just, this guy is being link number two. Uh, the backside cylinder, let's have it consist of links three, or three will represent that sliding block, four will represent this simple link. Let's go with five being the link with all the holes in it. And then we have two more links associated with that near side linear actuator. And so we're at link six for the simple length, then link seven for the slider there. And so our total number of links will represent with the variable n, and that'll be seven. So we've got the links number, the other half of it is lettering the joints. And so here, I'll just start with the joints connecting into the frame. And so we'll call A being this pin connection, B being the slider associated with the cylinder, we got C being this pin joint here, D being the pin joint here, E being the sliding joint, F being that pin joint, G being this pin joint, H being this pin joint. And I believe that is all of them. I'm taking a moment to make sure that I don't have any caveats that I need to work look at in terms of uh, Gruber's equation, which I don't believe so. And so now we're ready to tally up our number of primary joints as well as our number of higher order joints. Uh, the number of higher order joints will be zero. I don't see any uh, cams or gears. Primary joints are pin joints and sliding joints, which are all the ones that we've considered up to this point. And so we just need to count all the red characters. So we've got three, six, and eight total. <coughs> And so a total of eight primary joints. And so with that information, we're now ready to uh, jump into Gruber's equation in order to calculate the mobility of the mechanism. And so just come down here, go up just a tad so we can keep this visible. And so I'll just go right here. Our formula that we found from our reference that we're using is three times n minus one minus two times j sub p minus j sub h for our planar mechanisms. And so we've got three times seven minus one minus two times eight minus zero. Uh, three times six is 18 minus two times eight is 16 minus zero gets us to a mobility of two. So what that tells us is that this mechanism needs two independent inputs in order to fully control the mechanism.
And so uh, that makes sense for just this arm portion here. Uh, if you look at the, the working mechanism, we saw the video then that it was working, that it does have two independent hydraulically actuated cylinders here, uh, which do control that motion. So that makes intuitive sense for us. Uh, another thing I'll just apologize now, I guess. Um, I've been probably flipping back and forth between saying joints and connections, and so forgive me for that. Uh, if you're reading in the textbook that we've referenced above here, um, every time I really should connection there should have been a, a joint there. But hopefully that's not too detrimental uh, to you learning how to draw kinematic diagrams, as well as classifying the different types of joints, determining how many links are on the mechanism, and then calculating mobility. And so uh, thank you for watching the video, and hopefully this helps you with your kinematic studies.